Hi and welcome back to the channel. If you are new, thank you so much for stopping by. Today's video is going to show you how to make some outcroppings in the ocean. And the good news is it's going to use those berry clusters that are left over from the previous palm tree hut project that you may have seen before. So sit tight, I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Any questions as always, ask me down below. I will do my best to answer them for you. Don't forget, if you like it, hit the like button. If you want to, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to find out when I've uploaded my latest videos. So here we go. Take care, have fun with it, and I'll see you later. Bye. For your supplies, you're going to want berry clusters from Dollar Tree, double corrugated cardboard, single ply toilet paper and or tissues. You can even use the thinner paper towels. Mod Podge, make sure it's the matte variety water, old paint brushes, a hot glue gun and sticks, cups for mixing, acrylic paints as I mentioned them in the video, and to finish it off you're going to want a gloss spray sealer to make sure you protect the piece. So let's get started with the process. For the base what you want to do is take the double corrugated cardboard and you're going to cut out a free form shape. So you can use a pair of scissors, you can use an exacto knife or a utility knife, anything of the like to help you get these rounded off shapes and corners. You don't want to have something that's a straight rectangle or a square in this case. So carefully get those edges taken care of and hopefully you have something that looks along the lines of this. Now what you're going to do is pull the clusters off the stems and you're going to trim off any pieces that are sticking out. Heads up, berries might pop off, that's okay, you can always glue them back later. So once you get it trimmed down, what you're going to do is hot glue this onto your cardboard base. And when you get that hot glued on, you may have to hold it just for a couple seconds to make sure it's secure. You can also go around and hot glue other berries to each other to make sure things aren't sticking out as much. And you may also find that you're going to have to go back in with another cluster and attach it as well just to give it more of a form that you'd like. The other thing you want to make sure you do is to go around the base of the berries and take your hot glue gun to make sure it's nice and secure around the bottom. While you're at it, make sure you also put hot glue around the edge of the cardboard to hide the double corrugation. To getting the basic look that you want and you'll know you're ready when you look at it and you feel satisfied with its overall shape and form. Now's the time to get your tissues or toilet paper or thin paper towels ready. What you are going to do is put these over your berry clusters and this is what's going to give it its more rock-like appearance. You also want to make sure that you create a mixture of Mod Podge and water. So it's about the consistency of whole milk. And you're going to take this mixture and using an old paintbrush, you're going to blot this over the tissue or whatever you've decided to use as you get it on top of the berries. And this is gonna help the tissue form against the berries. And the thing that I found is that you can put different amounts of layers on, you can tuck the tissue underneath the berries and start creating it so you get some interesting forms and shapes and textures. The other thing that you can play around with is adding different types of textured tissue so you can get different looks. Or so say something is quilted, that almost gets a barnacle-like look to it when you put it onto the berries. End result is you want to have everything sort of tucked in, not necessarily smoothed out, but you want this to look like a large rock when you are done. Finally, for this step, make sure you give plenty of time for that mixture to dry on the tissue. Do not move ahead until you know this is completely dry so you don't end up ripping the tissue in process. Now we're going to move on to getting the paints onto these pieces. The first thing you'll want to do is using a mixture of Mod Podge, burnt umber and pavement is mix it together and paint the rock on your piece. Then you want to make sure you also paint that cardboard by doing a mix of a deep navy color with Mod Podge and you're going to paint that on the double corrugated cardboard and let those dry completely before moving on to the next step. Once everything is completely dry, you're going to move over to using a granite gray and with a chisel tip brush, you're going to go across and paint the paint onto the rock. Not quite a dry brush, a little bit more heavy handed, but this is going to start bringing out the textures. When you're done with the granite gray, you're then going to move on to a nutmeg brown. And again, the same technique, a little bit more than you would with a dry brush. You do want to have these colors blend together a little bit. When those paints have dried, you're then going to move over to using a peach toned paint. And in this case, you are going to start dry brushing with this particular color. And as you can see, it starts highlighting the more dips and grooves that are in this rock. And to wrap it up, you will then add a coating of a moss green, again with a 
dry brush technique again to bring out those textures. So that's how you get the rock painted. You want to make sure that dries completely before we move on to the next step of adding the waves onto the cardboard base. Adding the waves is a bit like covering the berries with the tissues. However, in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to make a blend of that deep navy paint with Mod Podge and add water to it. Then what you want to do is take a single ply of tissues. I find tissues a little bit better for the waves just because you get more pretty much material to work with. Now, as you can see, you bunch up the tissue here like this, and you're going to start dabbing in that Mod Podge more around the base and the bottom. You do want to be careful that you don't get this mixture onto your rock because it can dye the rock because of the paint in it. The trick here is to keep the folds deeper and more pronounced in the tissue because these are what are going to become your breaking waves up against your rock. So play around with this. Move the tissue around a little bit, tuck it up, pull it out a little. You can give it its own unique look. The one thing I did find helpful is to try and create the larger waves up against where the stone is because that gives them more of that crushing into the rock appearance as opposed to further out. And again, it's also good to have some lower areas because those will look like the more lower riding waves that again you'll find in the current factor of the ocean water around these rocks. So you're just pretty much going to go through and you want to make sure you get almost as full of a saturation as you can on the tissue without having it go limp. So you might want to play around with this concept a little bit before actually putting it onto your rock base. But here you can see it's almost come to a close and again you can tear up some pieces that are a little bit smaller if you want to get a little less material in there. But this is how you get the basics of the waves created and it helps having that blue mixed in with a Mod Podge because it just takes out having to try and get the blue paint into all of the nooks and crannies. So you want to end up with something like this. Make sure it dries completely before we move on to adding the highlighting and the gloss phase to make this look more like water. The paints used in this section are very much the same paints that I use for the beach terrain, so hopefully you have these on hand. But the one thing you want to make sure you do is use that chisel tip brush, and you're going to stick to using the deep navy again around the outer edge of your finished piece. I found that this sort of shows the deeper water factor. So really just keep it to the edges. You can bring it in just a little bit in those lower areas, but this gives it more of the deep water look that you'll find around these outcroppings. So you don't have to cover the piece completely, you just want to get this literally put around your edges like that. When that's done, you don't have to wait for the paint to dry. You can actually move over to where we're going to start adding in the metallics because it's the metallics that help give it the more water-like appearance. So with the same brush, don't worry about washing it off, you're going to move on to using a mid-tone blue metallic and just bring that across the lower areas of the waves. Don't put it up towards the top too much because you want to keep this as the deeper part of the water. So you can see here I'm just kind of tucking it into the folds, doing more of a dry brushing technique with the same metallic, but this is what starts giving it the glistening look of water. And you are going to cover it a little bit more thoroughly than you would with a full dry brush, but you want to make sure you get the medium tone metallic on first. Then you're going to move up to a lighter tone of a blue metallic. And in this case, you're going to keep it up towards the higher points, which you're about to see in a second here. So using that mid-tone, or sorry, the lighter blue, you're going to go for the higher points. So you can see here, I'm not going as low down with a brush as I was before. I'm trying to highlight the creases and the folds that are now the waves. And this really is what starts transforming the look of this piece. So keep that blue up a little bit higher and just dry brush around. Make sure to get those higher points because that's really what sells the look in the long run. And if you're having issues with getting some pieces because they're bent over, I do suggest putting your fingernail underneath to act as support, as you can see here. And there you go with the next round of blue. The other thing I started to do is I started to take this particular color blue and I would dab it into different sections of the rock just to sort of look like water was splashed up against the rocks. You don't have to do this. If for some reason you get blue and you don't want blue on your rock, just paint over it. Quick and easy fix there. But I kind of like the water splashing against it look. 
So when you've done that, you are next going to move on to a gloss white acrylic paint. And you do want this to be gloss because if you don't use a gloss, it's going to have this odd muted look to it. So taking that paint, you're literally going to stick mostly to the edges of the waves. And this is the foam breaking at the top of the waves here. And this part is completely up to you. If you want to have it look like there's a lot of foam around your rock, then by all means add more white. If you want it to look a little less violent, <laughs> I guess, you don't have to add as much white, but you do want to keep it onto the edges of your waves and catch the higher peaks and crests of the folds. Then make sure you allow this to dry completely before we move on to the last step of painting your waves. You're going to move on to using this ice blue pearl paint. It's a little bit more translucent of, a, translucent of a metallic, but what you do here is basically go over where the white was and you're going to add a little bit of this just to give it more of the shimmery qualities like the other paints have, but also to blend it in a little bit better because that white can get a little bit harsh in some of the areas. But I found this little step kind of blended everything together and gave it that final finished look to it. So just go through and you can just gently tuck it into certain areas. You can dry brush with it and just take your time and play around with it. So this is the final look of what happens when you go through with your metallic blues. So here is the final look of our rock outcroppings. As you can see, I purposely paint these so that it does match the blue mat that we have for our water effects for our game table. It's something that I'm really happy with and I hope it's something you give a try. Any questions as always, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Make sure to check out the description for all the relevant links that are involved with this video. And I have this cute little seal as a mini for reference for size for you here. So I hope you enjoy. Make sure you stay tuned because there's a little bit more to follow. Now, before you leave, I did want to highlight a couple of group members that I have on my Facebook page who have been extremely active, but also showing off their really cool talents. Now, more often than not, I am showing you how to actually craft terrain pieces and that type of thing. However, they have the whole paper craft thing down pat, and it's absolutely incredible. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple pictures. First of all, uh, you might have noticed the cute little seal on the picture of the uh, rocks in the ocean, and that was done by Randy. And Randy has this really great eye. I really enjoy seeing what he comes up with because his pieces are so unique and they almost have a cartoonish look to them without them looking cheesy, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to put a couple pictures, let me see, I'll put them over, yeah, let's put them right here. So here are a couple pictures that he sent me that I am free to share with you guys. As you can see, he's definitely got a unique look. It's one of those things where the second he posts, you know it came from him because of its uniqueness. So that's one of those things where if you want to come over to the Facebook page and you can actually take a look at things, or the Facebook group, I should say, you can take a look at things as he's posting them because I got to tell you, they're really thumbs up very cool. I also want to highlight another member of mine, and that is Georgie. He's got this great concept of making up posters, which you can print out on your printer, shrink them down to the size you need, and you can tack them up on your signposts or whatever it is you have going on in your terrain, where a couple of posters might be pretty cool. He does things like wanted posters, announcements. Uh, he's also made up some really great posters for a few of the channels that we have going around here. Uh, this is the one for mine, which I absolutely love. However, he's made another one, which is this one. On top of that, he also has one for dungeons and glue sticks, which I love that look of that one as well. And then of course the Tabletop Crafters Guild. So again, please feel free to come over to my Facebook group. I have some very talented, very creative folks who are sharing their work and it's inspiring others, which is exactly what I'd hoped for. And I'm always loving to see new people come in and stop by. So that is it for me today. Yes, there are bloopers. I promise there are bloopers. I don't know why I always have bloopers, but I do. So have a great day. Take care. Bye. Hey now! Hey now, hey now. Don't dream it's over. She's in a mood, folks. She's in a mood. Okay. How many takes could a woodchuck chuck if a wood cut the dubba? <laughs> no. I don't know. <clears throat> I bet that sounded lovely. <laughs> Sorry.